हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ऑल द यू पी एस सी एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विस एस्पायरेंट्स इन द अभी मन्यू आई एस एन इंस्टीट्यूट विच इज़ ग्रूमिंग द सिविल सर्विस एस्पायरेंट्स फ्राम द लास्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर्स एंड इज़ एबल टू स्कोर मोर दैन ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड रिजल्ट सिंस नाइनटीन नाइन्टी नाइन एंड टू कंटिन्यू विद द सेम पाथ वी आर ब्रिंगिंग अ यूट्यूब सीरीज कॉल्ड इशूज एंड द एनालिसिस इन विच वी टेक दोज टॉपिक्स हु हैव हायर रेलिवेंस टू अपियर इन द एग्जाम्स वैथर इट इज़ प्रिलिम्स और मेन्स सो माई सेल्फ प्रवेश वट्स and i am the faculty here in the abhimanyu ias of indian polity and governance and that is why i come with the topics every week on different issues which have higher relevance to appear in the exam so today also i have come with a topic which is namely political rebais right which is simply called the political tool by the parties to lure votes of the voters by giving them gifts or the monetary benefits right so before we before we begin our journey let me introduce something about us that we are targeting civil services exam for the next year 2023 and 24 and we are providing a one year course personal mentorship as well as coaching for both prelims as well as for mains and this course is going to be in the online as well as in the offline mode and the students who want to take in both the modes can take and the people who want to join this they may take a free trial of 7 days of which link is available in the description box of the video so let's begin our lecture of today on the topic political rebais so the question is what is political rebais and whether it is a new concept or an old age concept so before we understand whether it is old or age first of all we have to dwell that what actually it is so as i mentioned that political rebais are the free gifts or the promises by the political parties to influence the voters and take their consent and the votes political parties time and again come and they say that we will give you this that and that is why they take people in the confidence and they take their consent as well as the votes and they win and they make their political parties into the government right what are the examples what are the prominent examples of political rebais so giving loan waivers before the elections to the farmers right free distribution of laptops e gadgets scooters motorcycles free traveling in the buses right and monthly monetary allowances in the form of pension of 1000 2000 3000 before attaining the age of 60 which is the prescribed age limit to get the pension but recently we are witnessing in the indian political sphere that the political parties are giving them giving pensions in the form of 1000 2000 to those section of society who have higher chance to get confident under the influence of political parties right now whether it is an old age concept or a new concept so political rebais are practiced from the last several years right but in recent times what we are witnessing is a race for it in various political affiliations various political parties which is, which has made it an integral part or a constituent part of our electoral process every year whenever we face the elections or whenever we get into the electoral process we find these political rebais very common very easily available in the political sphere right after this why the issue of political rebais is in news though it is an old age concept why we are thinking too much about the political rebais now and why it is receiving huge attention of the people throughout the world not only in indian context so because of the sri lanka's economy collapse which we are witnessing even now and what was the reason of this collapse was that government made taxes very minute minimal or less you can say that negligible and they provided several essential goods and services in free to all the people in their country and the respect which they were having that increased but the result is that they got huge indebtedness right the government took huge debt the government is facing huge debt they are unable to pay 
to the banking authorities, to the international banks from where they took the money to provide these essential services in free to the people of their country, right? The result is collapse of economy, right? Their economy is almost collapsed. It is almost demolished and emergencies like situations are there and the state of Sri Lanka is in the chaos where there is no law and order, economic stability, everything is a kind of you know civil war. The people are outside, the people are raising and protesting on the streets as you can witness in this image. They are challenging the authority and the autonomy of their government as well as their state. Right? So the result is a state of chaos is being prevalent in Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister of India cautioned or warned, right? He cautioned all the political parties and their leaders to avoid the use of these kinds of political revise for their vote bank politics as it is hurting the country's development in the long run, right? Because the things which we are witnessing now it is an example or a warning, for an example, Sri Lanka could be a warning for us that if we continue with the pace of giving political fribis in the same manner, so we will also be the next country to lose our state of peace, our law and order, our macroeconomic stability and integrity especially of our country, right? So that is why the Prime Minister of India warned to all the political parties to avoid this. Then. Election Commission of India, which is a constitutional body to conduct free and fair elections in India. The chairpersons of the Election Commission of India, they also warned or urged from the various state and the central governments to use this money which they are paying to the people in the name of political fribis. The, the election commission saying that you have to and you should use this money at the time of natural calamities or the severe calamities like we had in the name of COVID-19 virus from which we have just come out, right? And even still it is roaming as a clouds over us. So the hardcore money of the taxpayer which the government is getting, they should not use for the political purposes, for the naive political interest. They should use this money to really do the development work in our country and to assist people at the time of emergency like providing free ration, free medical facilities, free commuting services at the time of natural disasters like because we witness a lot of disasters every year. So this money should be simply be used for that purposes. This is a suggestion of election commissioner of India. right? Then, some people in India, even, they think that political fribis are a good thing for them, right? They are saying that we can justify the political fribis, even here not comes only people, even the major political party stakeholders have some claims on the basis of which they justify the usage of political fribis. Now let's come on this, how they justify. First, they say that it facilitates growth of poorest sections of the society. Example, subsidized food, education, health, increase social capital and save poor's income for their use. What it simply means that they are saying that in India, a lot of people are living under the den of poverty, right? They are very poor. They are unable to afford the essential services to live a happy life and to earn their livelihood. So that is why they have a mentality that usage of political fribis is just because when the people or the poorest section of the society is getting subsidized food, education, health care, so at least they are becoming them they are becoming the real part of the society. They are becoming humans, right? They are becoming good citizens of the country. So and the income which they are earning, which is very meager, they can use that income for the emergency situations in which no one will help them, even the state won't help them, right? So they are saying that the uh, subsidized 
things which the state is providing or the political freebies or the gifts which the state is giving they are good for the interest of india because they are uplifting the poorest section of the society and bringing them into the mainstream section of the society second it helps industrial development by increasing the demand of various products because when political parties are giving scooters e gadgets clothes and various other products to the people in the name of free gifts so what is happening in the market the demand and supply is getting increased right the economy principle the demand is getting increased and resultant the industries are getting huge demand from the government side and they are providing huge supply to the government which the government is using in the name of political free gifts right so they are saying that it is also increasing the economic development the industries are running the employment opportunities are being created in which the people in in the industry because the people have to work to produce this much amount third they say that it is a sign of welfare state providing major necessary items to citizens in less cost or free to make their life less costly and increase their trust in governance so two things trust and welfare state the people also justify political freebies on the basis of welfare state they say that india is a democratic country and india is a democratic country where we are having the responsibilities of the state in the name of dpsp to provide welfareism to the people right to help the people to go hand in hand for the development of india the state has to take hand of the citizens in the name of welfare of the country and they have to take care of them right so it is a responsibility of the governments as for the people who are getting the use or who are getting the benefits of the political gifts in the name of political freebies and they also say that if the state or the, if the government is providing us such political gifts it is also creating trust in us for our government it is also creating trust in us for our state such right they are saying if state is unable to provide us anything if we are ourselves doing everything to live our life so what is the need of state so that is why they are saying that it is very important to use the state help for our, for our life because only then we will able to create trust for the state and trust for the governance for the government also because this is their responsibility to provide the welfareism in the society after this providing people's money back to people here not the people as such but the leaders of major political parties have this idea that the taxes which we are getting from the people it is their money right and therefore the money or the gifts which we are giving in the name of political freebies or gifts this is giving back someone their property right it simply means that the people give us money in the form of taxes and what we are doing is we are giving this money again to the people in the form of free gifts or subsidies right so these are some common justifications of political freebies which are being prevalent in india now let's move on next slide which talks about the arguments we have to consider that more than justification for the political freebies we have arguments against the political freebies so first is regarding the economic aspects it says that it will impact the fiscal health macro economic stability increase fiscal profligacy or fiscal wastage and excess expenditure of the states right so these are the economic terms which signifies that your economic stability or economic growth will be hampered or will be problem will be in problem if you will use the tool of political freebies right it also says that excess expenditure is done by the states where they cross their limits where they cross their fiscal boundaries under which they use this gifts giving ceremonies and the responsibility which they have under the frbm act which is also very famous act fiscal responsibility and budget management act under which the state governments during the time of budget 
have to ensure that they do not cross limits of borrowing and they do have surplus amount of money to deal the emergency situations. This is an act under the year 2003 under which not only the centre as well as the state governments have to maintain the surplus amount to deal those situations, right? And to maintain fiscal stability whether it is central or whether it is state. So states are crossing their boundaries under the FRBM Act and what is the result is that they are getting exhausted in their borrowing limits. Because once they are taking money in the name of borrowing, but time and again they are giving political fabies, but they are not getting enough borrowing from the bank sec banking sector or from the international banking or from the central uh, you know, help. They are not getting enough money then. Because if you will use the hardcore money of taxpayers, so no one is going to give you time and again that money to use for your name interest, right? Second, it says that it is creating distrust in the tax paying population. The people who are earning much and who are giving taxes much, they are giving with an intention that this money will be helpful for our country's development. But when they are witnessing that this money which we are paying, this is being used for by the political parties to serve their own interest rather than the country's development. So what is happening? They are, they are having distrust for the government and for the tax paying itself, right? And it will re sooner result in less generation of taxes for the government because the taxpayer will lose interest in paying the taxes and they will definitely use tax avoidance mechanisms, tax avoidance loopholes and the result would be that not only the government will also not getting the taxes and there will be no development in the country and soon and sooner the country will be like you know a devastating country you will not be having taxes you will not be having development state of chaos will come again back to india right this is a third point which says that it hurts the credit culture by giving loan waivers repeatedly what governments in india are doing and they do, especially at the time of elections, is that before elections, they give loan waivers to the farmers, right? So it is hurting the credit culture because the people who have taken credit on the loan from the banks or the financial institutions, especially the cooperatives, and the time come to repay that loan, so what farmers and what other people who have taken the loan from the banks and financial institution is that they do the protest and they raise their voices collectively in the front of government before the election to provide them waiver in the form of farm loan waiver or any other loan waiver which hurts the credit culture which hurts the loan facility of the banking sector and the result is bank becomes a non-bank kind of institution which simply means that bank then unable to perform its banking functions effectively and smoothly and that just becomes a, you know, a blank building. There's no effective usage of banking system in that bank, right? Then it is against the free and fair elections, against free and fair elections because it influences voters more than the real development, right? In India, like it happens that the people who stops on the red lights, they are not that respected instead of those who cross that light. The same is here that the political parties who has done development at the grassroots level is not that respected, rather who use this item of political tribes who give gifts to the people, right? So it hurts real development then because that political parties comes into the government which will only do corruption, nepotism and other sort of negative interest rather than real development and it will dilute level playing field and violate purity of democratic electoral process, right? Democratic electoral process where the free and fair elections needs to be done, where all the major political parties or, or all the minor political parties be given equal chance or equal platform to raise votes on the basis of their rational debates, on the basis of their rational manifestos. So, but the usage of political free bias prevent that it led to the uh, voting system where the money plays a lot of role, where nepotism plays a lot of role, where corruption plays a lot of role, 
right so it is against the democratic electoral process when we use political tribes in india whether it is center or the states then wastage of natural resources this is the link of polity with the environment wastage of natural resources because when the government are providing subsidized water supply electricity fertilizers so what people do and those people who are getting the benefits is that they use these items in excess they cross the boundations they cross the limits of using in an appropriate manner and the result is that it will leads to depletion of resources our resources get vanished right they become very lower and to that extent that our environment becomes unable to recreate them right so directly or indirectly the political tribes not only impacts our health but also our environment and climate change is one of the important reason because of the usage of political tribes and in the last tribes have taken place of the subsidies which is creating a sense of deprivation and inequality in the society right example giving free commuting services in government buses to women right in delhi it is in being practiced and uh, recently it has been practiced in punjab also where the women as a part of the society themselves are given the right to ride or commute in the government bus services free of cost so what is the impact the impact is two first it is creating a sense of deprivation to the all people who are not getting this benefit why because not only women require this commuting services in free old age people also require men also require children also require transgenders also require so these are also except men these are also the vulnerable sections of the society who really require the hand of the state to live their life happily because students are unable to earn old age peoples are not having enough income they are just having pension which is getting used to live their life and the medicine uh, you know medical purposes then transgenders again they are begging on the roads they are not having enough money in their pockets right and men even in the men there are very uh, there are number of people who are unable to afford even 10 rupees in a day right so these are the categories of people who are also vulnerable but only when women are getting themselves this right rather than all these vulnerable sections because all women are not vulnerable right in the categories of women even most of the women have the dissenting views against the government who are providing this commuting services free into the buses because they are saying that all the women do not require even this commuting services and free there are number of women who are earning very higher incomes so why they will need this right so on not on the basis of feasibility this mechanism is being used by the government authorities but it is the gender discrimination which is being provided or being promoted by the government authorities because and you know this is a this is a dangerous thing for a state because state has a responsibility to avoid gender discrimination rather than propounding or promote you know professing it so it is providing deprivation to all those vulnerable sections which i have just mentioned and second it is providing a sense of inequality in the hearts or in the minds of the people who are not getting it right they are thinking that just because they are women they are getting it and just because we are men we are not getting it so what should have been done is rather than on the basis of gender or age it should have been on the principle of the economic resources is that the people who is not having enough income to commute in the services only those people would be given the chance to commute in the service in the government buses at free of cost right so that would have been an inclusive as well as a justiciable policy in the interest of all the sections of society as i mentioned it should have been given to old age and the less economical men students women who have very meager income right after this what is the way forward or the conclusion because we can't as a ups as a upsc aspirants be only dealing with the problems and the you know uh, bad things we have to produce the results and that result should be that feasible that we can apply it so what is the way forward 
So first, there is a need to realize the economic impact of our resources, or, or, or the economic impact of political freebies on our resources from the excess usage of it, right? We have to understand that political freebies are a tool of political parties to lure their votes and the impact which is getting on our economic resources is very huge, very higher, which is unacceptable in the long run, right? So a sense of responsibility as a well enlightened citizen, we have to realize. Second, free buys should be used in judicious manner with proper feasibility without hurting taxpayers and those who don't get it, right? So as I just mentioned, the woman example of the commuting, the decisions of giving subsidies should be based not on the gender, not on the age, rather on the economic principles or the social circumstances principles to provide justice and real justice to the people, right? And without hurting the taxpayer, we should not hurt taxpayer by using their money for the so-called negative, for the so-called political interest. We should use the taxpayer money for the real and the holistic and the inclusive development of India in the name of infrastructure and other things, right? And this political is not should be used as a political tool to get the voters vote, rather emphasize should be on creation of human development, right? What human development? School, education, skills we should provide as a political institutions to the citizen of the country. We need to create infrastructure and markets and jobs everywhere so that people do not migrate time and again from their particular cities to the urban areas and the same level of development should be done in both whether it is urban or the rural and we should now focus on smart villages rather than smart cities because we already have smart cities but we do not have smart villages which is a major cause of concern in the India's economic development, right? And do not get lured from these freebies and make India a development country. So again, I would say that we need to realize that these political freebies are just the, uh, the, just the short term interest which can impress us, which can affect us. But in the long term, not only us, but our economy, our environment, our country, and all the major issues would be severely hurted with the usage of political freebies. And even if the political freebies should be used, so they should be used in a judicious manner, in an appropriate manner, by maintaining the credibility of the financial systems and by maintaining the trust of the taxpayers who are paying this tax money. And that's all. So this much is available in this topic. I hope that everyone understand this topic. And with this, I'm ending and winding up my lecture. So thank you so much for listening me peacefully, carefully. And I hope that uh, with this issue and analysis series, you'll be able to score well in your prelims as well as your mains exam, which is very near. And so read well, prepare well. We'll meet again on uh, uh, next topic in the next week. So thank you so much. We'll meet again. Thank you.